Welcome to another design and engineering update, Fusion 360. If you're looking for the manufacturing update, make sure to check out my video in the upper corner now. But let's hop into the good stuff right now for design and engineering. Fusion, fusion, fusion. All right, let's start this design and engineering update with one of my favorites, converting imported geometry into sheet metal bodies. So start by importing your favorite piece of sheet metal, no matter if it's a step, I just, SolidWorks, Inventor, or any other sheet metal component. This part is important, so pay attention. Sheet metal is only available in parametric mode, so make sure to capture the design history by right-clicking on the top of the browser. First, notice this imported geometry is a solid body. Now, to turn it into a sheet metal body, we didn't do anything tricky. Simply select the Convert to Sheet Metal command, then the stationary face to convert it into a sheet metal body in Fusion 360. Now, you can add more sheet metal flanges, create a flat pattern, create a drawing, or even start to add toolpaths to machine this on your plasma, water jet, or laser cutter. All right, all right, this next one is something we should have had the entire time, but we finally can export drawings as DXF and DWG. So first, when you go to export out a DWG, you will want to export out an AutoCAD DWG if you're moving this drawing to further work down in AutoCAD. For all other tools, select the simplified DWG. Now, when you go to export out a sheet as a DXF, well, there's nothing special, but it just works. We are currently spinning up some new drawing resources, so expect more great stuff to come soon in drawings. Okay, hold on for this next one. Have you ever shared a link to your Fusion 360 design and wondered how cool that was that you can view and interact with it in a web browser? Oh, you know it's cool. But have you ever tried to take that design and open it back in Fusion 360 when it's shared with you? Oh yeah, that sucked. Well, we now added a button to open straight in Fusion 360. I know you're all going to love that one. Well, this next one I didn't believe, but our development team is reporting they have improved the performance of how we handle larger assemblies by approximately 77 to 99 percent for component moves and 33 to 99 percent for joint edits. Yes, over 99 percent. Crazy, I know, but after playing around, I'm now a believer. Stay tuned for more. We will continue to enhance our code to make sure we are working faster with larger assemblies. Next, if you're like me, you have logged into your Fusion 360 account on multiple computers to view a file, get a job done, or just show how easy it is to access your Fusion 360 data. At least for me, there has been countless instances where I forgot to log out, leaving my Fusion 360 data available to anyone to steal. Now, when you open Fusion 360 and you're signed in somewhere else, this little dialog will pop up. There are a few options, so let's walk through them real quick. The first option will log you into this computer and suspend the other computer where Fusion 360 is logged in. Don't worry, if you have any rendering, simulation, toolpath, or any other resource calculating on that other computer, those will continue so you can unsuspend that machine when you are ready to save your work. Next, the second option is what I call the security switch. If you don't recognize the computer that is active, you can shut down and sign out that instance of Fusion 360. If it was a mistake, don't worry, your work will be saved as a recovered document. Third on the list is what you would want to use if you're signing into the wrong account. This will log you out of the machine you are currently working on and let you sign in with a different Fusion 360 account. Finally, you can just close Fusion 360 on the computer you're working on. Alright, now it's time to switch to some generative design. This first one is a big one, so we wanted to get it in your hands early for testing. Make sure to go to the preferences, then to the previews, and turn on the advanced physics option. As customers were testing generative design, they wanted to define an objective more than just achieving a factor of safety. Well, now you could define a minimum modal frequency and a maximum displacement that will generate geometry to meet these objectives. We are excited to get these new types of objectives in your hands early so you can start making generative designs for more complex problems. Next, after generating hundreds of outcomes with tons of iterations, we've gotten feedback that it is difficult to locate and categorize specific iterations of different outcomes. So in this update, we're adding the ability to label specific iterations in any outcome. After creating a label, the label will appear as a filter in the left-hand side of the Explore environment to easily access your favorites. While we're on labels, we also added a filter for materials that you selected for some of the generative solves. 
That convert to sheet metal tool looks awesome. I cannot wait to try it. Yeah, and Autodesk University is coming up in November, so make sure to register. Other than that, make sure to check out Marty's video over here for more manufacturing updates up in the top right. Other than that, have a great week, guys. See you next time.